when thinking about the first principle where uh, it was stated that people develop software well it's quite uh, obvious that people aren't all alike so yes basically achieving team diversity is a thing that is quite simple uh, to attain but this comes with uh, a set of problems or issues that should be handled and tackled. When you have diversity in a team, conflict is the inevitable companion. When everyone feels the same, has the same values, thinks the same way, you don't have conflict. But when you're trying to achieve diversity, conflict comes with, uh, with a goal. So where you have two different and divergent ideas about the design, for instance, the idea or the goal or the guidelines tell you to present an opportunity. So basically, when all programmers work together and should work together, those two different and divergent ideas should be valued. The idea is to create the most valuable software possible in the time available. So why don't present an opportunity for one of them. And then, if it works, good. If it doesn't work, go to the other idea. This comes from a background of social skills that actually should be put in place because everyone should work with everyone. No one stumbles into excellence. So this is quite funny, actually, because cycles all cycles include time for reflection. Good teams do their work, but excellent things think. How they are working, why they are working, besides doing their work, and act accordingly. So it's quite beneficial when you introduce some time of reflection inside the cycle or the usual cycle of the team. The daily build, for example, is flow-oriented. So let's take a look at what is flow. A steady flow of valuable software is where you actually avoid the Big Bang integration, where you have lunch, large chunks of value, and this only happens when you have less feedback. So basically, when you have a Big Bang integration is when you stop delivering on a continuous space to your customer, and the customer only has uh, an option or the opportunity to provide feedback when there is a large amount of features already implemented. So basically this, this promotes an environment that is not very sustainable because you have always the headache of doing a Big Bang integration and you have a lot of things that you want to go through with your customer and your customer isn't able to provide you with all the feedback that he should and that he wants. So the idea when speaking about the flow and the daily build is to actually promote the continuous deployment, the continuous releases to the client and the idea in extreme programming is to get back to weekly deployment as soon as possible. Learn to see problems as opportunities. You have a problem, you have an issue. So what are you going to do to solve this issue and to overcome the problem and to actually keep the, the work that needs to be done? One of the options could be to request for more time to actually conduct the, the change. The other is to actually have the patience and wait for the problem to be solved by itself. Or the other uh, final options is to actually turn each problem into an opportunity. This opportunity could be both to grow and learn or to improve what you're doing. The idea is something new comes up, you don't see it immediately as a threat. You actually look at the issue that was just raised, whether it was by the customer or by a team member as an opportunity. You have an issue, it's a change, it will impact on your direct work, okay? But let's look at it as an opportunity, not as a threat. Yes, redundancy. 
this uh, seems or could seem that it goes against what uh, the simplicity value to explains and preaches. If one solution fails, try another and another and another. One solution will be intimately related to another solution because you have to start with by doing something, okay? If you consider, for instance, that having a final testing phase in your process is redundant, try it, put the final testing phase, try and do and conduct all the tests that are required in that final stage. And once you are happy and you are confident that that final testing phase is actually redundant or it doesn't bring any value for your work, eliminate that phase, but show that it is redundant. If you're having trouble succeeding, fail. This is the fail fast or the learn fast principle as it is currently being named uh, today. Every time you have a failure, does this imply that you are wasting or that you have wasted your time? The idea is to look at failure as something positive because if you failed, you already know that is not the path to go. You have to fail, you have to live and walk the path and when you don't know what to do you have to risk to fail to be sure that you are going in the right direction and in the right path quality is not a control variable despite being a, a large used um, metric and it's quite difficult to measure quality by itself projects don't go faster if quality decreases seldom used as a um, a way to effectively conduct a contract to say uh, this is usually uh, used by customers so if the project isn't as good as it could be so if it has less quality will it go faster don't use the, those type of arguments because they aren't good arguments projects don't go slower if the quality increases actually if you don't promote quality from the first line of code, you actually are going to find and are going to have a, a trouble to go at the end of the product and actually deliver it. Quality is, is it's a metric, but it's actually a composed metric. So you can actually measure the defects that you found uh, in your software. You can measure the quality of the design and the experience of the development team. Any, every time that you look at the metrics and that you measure something, you have the opportunity that leads you to improve what you already have. Because you have to establish a baseline so that you can promote um, and improve your productivity, the effectiveness and even the quality of the product that you are delivering. Change is unsettling. So this uh, actually says it, says it all because no one likes to change. And the idea behind extreme programming is to avoid big changes or big steps that ultimately lead to a big fall. Instead, take baby steps. So if you have a change and you have to accommodate that change, you are embracing that change, Think of it as an overhead of small steps instead of considering the entire big change that you have to apply and walk as a baby, one baby step after the other in order to achieve the great change that you have to accommodate that was requested for you. Responsibility cannot be assigned. It can only be accepted. Usually, People are responsible because they're grown-ups, they're adults, and they're doing their job. But it's kind of hard to do something that happens uh, in traditional environments and in traditional teams. Usually, in traditional settings, you have a project manager that estimates the amount of work that is required to conduct a task, and then assigns that task to someone. In here, in XP, whoever signs up to do the work 
is the, the person that is responsible to estimate the task duration, design and conceive the entire infrastructure that is required to accomplish that work, will be the person that in actually implements the work and ultimately the person that tests the work. So this is how to achieve responsibility in a setting that you can say to a member of your team, this is the work that you need to do. It's better to be the person to sign up for the work. <laughs>